It was just over 150 years ago that British engineer Robert Whitehead developed the first effective self-propelled torpedo, and prior to that point the term torpedo was used to describe a variety of underwater mines and booby traps. But beginning with the Whitehead torpedo the term now is for a self-propelled projectile that travels under or on the water. Spearfish torpedoes use sonar to home in on targets, are carried by the Royal Navy's Astute class and Trafalgar class hunter killer submarines, and the nuclear deterrent Vanguard class, to neutralize underwater and surface threats. The Spearfish torpedo is the heavy torpedo used by the submarines of the Royal Navy. It can be guided by wire or by autonomous active or passive sonar and provides both anti-submarine warfare ASW, and anti-surface ship warfare ASAW, capability. The torpedo has a maximum firing range of 54 kilometers with a and warhead weight of 300 kilograms, 660 pounds. While Stingray torpedoes are deployed on anti-submarine warfare mission, including frigates, Merlin, and Wildcat helicopters. They provide a close attack capability which also automatically targets enemy threats. The Stingray is a British acoustic homing lightweight torpedo, LWT, manufactured by the company GEC Marconi who is now part of BAE Systems. The torpedo is propelled by a pump jet driven by an electric motor. Power is supplied by a magnesium silver chloride seawater battery. The propulsion method combines high speed, deep diving, agility and low noise levels. She has a firing range from 8 to 11 kilometers and has warhead weight of 45 kilograms. Supporting over 100 skilled jobs at the BAE Systems Broad Oak facility in Portsmouth, the torpedo's repair and maintenance tram, contract will run for six years. TRAM supersedes the Torpedo Capability Contract TCC, with BAE Systems which ran for 10 years. The contract will help guarantee the Royal Navy's inventory of Spearfish heavyweight and Stingray lightweight torpedoes. A full suite of maintenance activities is also included. This support ranges from technical repair, provision of spares, stock management, logistics, and trials support. Ensuring the torpedoes are safely stored is vital, so the contract also offers safety, environmental, and engineering advice to support the continued secure use of the weapons. Now the Royal Navy has announced that the world's most advanced torpedo is on the cusp of entering service following extensive trials in Scotland. The upgraded Spearfish, the principal weapon of the UK's submarine flotilla against enemy ships and submarines, was reportedly fired repeatedly at the frigate HMS Sutherland as scientists, engineers and sailors studied its performance. The original Spearfish torpedo entered service with the Royal Navy in the 1990s, and this recent pounds 270 million upgrade, $350 million, included a new warhead, safer fuel system, and what has been described as an enhanced electronic brain. A team of around 100 engineers and naval weapons experts at BAE Systems in Portsmouth spent nearly six years improving the torpedo. The new torpedo was tested over the course of four days at special ranges near the Kyle of Lochelsh on the northwest coast of Scotland, located around 55 miles west-southwest of Inverness. The improved weapon was put through the paces in a number of exercises, which included testing the software and hardware enhancements. The Plymouth-based frigate, which took part in the drills, did its utmost to fend off the attacks. The Spearfish was set to run deep for safety reasons, so the mock engagement was only played out on the displays on the Sutherland ship's operations room. During the trial this week we have put our elite training into action, using a variety of underwater sensors to locate and track the weapon, said 23-year-old able seaman Matthew Brown from Perth, one of the underwater warfare specialists who's been tracking Spearfish. Having one of the most advanced and capable torpedoes in the world fired at you certainly puts the pressure on. A final trial of Spearfish will take place at the British Underwater Test and Evaluation Center, Butech, later in 2020 before the weapon is declared operational and begins being delivered to the submarine fleet. Once deployed the Royal Navy has said that the improved Spearfish would break the backs of frigates, destroyers and similar-sized warships and even take out any underwater threats. 
The torpedo will be introduced to frontline hunter killer and nuclear deterrent submarines over the next three years and will be in service into the 2050s. Navies around the world have worked to develop more advanced torpedoes, and earlier this year the US Navy began testing a very lightweight torpedo that was developed by Northrop Grumman. While last month it was announced, the Trussia had developed its spell, which has a reported speed of 200 knots. Multiple nations have sought to develop supercavitating torpedoes that are rocket-propelled and can ride inside an air bubble. The technology has certainly come a long way since the rather simple Whitehead torpedo. Modern submarine torpedoes are highly capable and amazingly lethal machines. Cold War science and experience has been improved with 21st century technology and engineering. Torpedoes like the BAE System Spearfish, Atlas Electronic Sea Hake Mod 4, Naval Group's F-21, and Russia's UGSTM are examples of how far the technology has come. A potent cocktail of high speed, lethality, long range, and low detectability give the modern torpedo attack a significant advantage over other naval weapons. A torpedo is essentially a guided missile that happens to fly underwater, see how cruise missiles work for details on missiles. A torpedo therefore has a propulsion system, a guidance system and some sort of explosive device. Torpedoes can travel several miles on their way to the target, and therefore they need a propulsion system that can run for 10 to 20 minutes. Most missiles that fly through the air use either rocket engines or jet engines, but neither of these work very well underwater. Torpedoes use one of two techniques for propulsion, back through World War II, the primary way torpedoes did their damage was with a direct hit. The impact of the torpedo on a ship's hull would drive a firing pin that sets off a warhead. The hope here is that the blast punches a hole in a ship, allowing water to flood in, causing the ship to list to one side or the other, and, eventually, capsize. Generally, this approach worked well, but it could take many direct hits to do damage enough to sink a vessel. The Japanese battleship Musashi, for example, took over 20 hits from MK-13 airdrop torpedoes before she went down. This was a problem, as defensive anti-aircraft capability developed, planes launching torpedoes needed to do so from higher altitudes, at faster speeds, and from further away, in order to survive. This was not conducive to scoring the many hits you needed to sink the enemy ship. In fact, with rare exceptions, the only vessels that use heavy anti-ship torpedoes today are submarines. The torpedoes used by planes and ships are often less than 13 inches wide and hold warheads packed with less than 100 pounds of high explosive. They're not that good against surface ships, but you don't need much to sink a sub that's a few hundred feet below the surface of the ocean. The heavy torpedoes themselves have also evolved, and not just in tracking capabilities. During World War II, the United States Navy fielded torpedoes equipped with magnetic exploders. However, they didn't quite work right. With bigger fish to fry and a war to fight, the US Navy simply disabled them and went on fielding functional, contact exploders. These torpedoes helped force Japan's surrender. But the magnetic exploder concept wasn't forgotten after the war, and for good reason, hitting the hull does some damage, but if you want to really kill a ship, it's best to break it in two. The best way to do that is to set off the explosion just below a ship. That will damage the ship's keel in a process called breaking its back. Modern torpedoes with magnetic exploders are designed to do exactly that, 